Hello everybody, it's Fiona here. Just want to welcome you all to our third Where You Pack. This time we're collaborating with artist Simone Chester. She delivered one of our first Where You sessions back in January 2019. Some of you may remember her. This time she's going to be leading us to make a decoupage memory box. Hi there Simone, welcome back. Glad to have you back with us. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? I'm Simone Chester, as you know. I used to run Chester Drawers and now we've kind of morphed into Creative Goddess, usually doing creative flow sessions. But today we're going to be going back to the my roots in uh, Chester Drawers and doing some decoupage work, which some of you might have done with the um, on the sessions that we did on those days we we did a little bit of decoupage and some paint effects and so today we're going to be doing um, a box okay so you this is the box that i've made i've um well not made i've decorated in the certain skills and elements that i'm going to be giving to you now um but i want you if you can to kind of take what you've got in your pack and make it your own this one I'm going to use uh, as a memory box. Can you tell us a little bit more about decoupage, Simone, please? Yeah, the decoupage is a, um, it's a craft technique. It's cut out pieces of paper from wallpapers. You may have photographs, you may have magazines, articles and all sorts of things. So that's something I'll be encouraging you to do is to find beautiful pieces of paper that you like that you can actually put on your box. But in your pack, you've got the, these wallpapers. So, he, so historically, it comes from the 17th century. First of all, we're going to be painting our box. Okay. So the box you have is this size, the same as mine, and you can see you've got uh, metal areas on the box as well to make it a bit more decorative. Um, and you've got your um, hinges at the back and the lock at the front. If there's bits of coming off or whatever, just get your, your scarer and just make sure that you've got all those bits off and it's nice and flat and clean, okay? The one thing I will say before we do any of that is round your edges here, I would take your small brush first, get a bit of your white emulsion, and then go round here really carefully first, then spudge your box. So this is called cutting in, and people, uh, decorators do it on walls. So they'll cut in the edges or against the ceiling so it doesn't, the colours don't overlap. And that way you, you hopefully won't get the colour on your metal, okay? If you do, and you, you, you know, you get really getting into it, it's not a problem. You just remove it with a, a damp cloth, okay? There's nothing wrong with doing that. If you want to go over it and then take it off afterwards, that's a nice technique. And sometimes you get a bit of residue on the, the lock as well, which makes it look a bit more distressed. What distress means in this process is it means it looks older. And I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. And I'm going to use the sponge to dip in and then go over the main part body of the box. So that's how I did the first lot of this, okay? So you get a flat white surface, okay? So then you wash your sponge, because this is really important. It's a really important tool for us. So if you wash that, leave it all to dry. One, one of the things you do need for this technique is patience. Everything has to be bone dry. So it's really dry to the touch and there's no wetness at all. And if you use that um, process, you'll get better results. So we've got to the, the first stage of a white box. The second stage of your painting, is you've got some blue acrylic. Now the difference between these two is the white, white emulsion is water soluble. The acrylic is PVA based. So if you get the acrylic on anything, you must get it off immediately, okay? Or your clothes or the box if you don't want it on there. 
because it forms a seal and then it can't be washed off, whereas the emulsion can. Okay, just to make that clear. So to get your light blue colour, I would get a little bit of your blue, which you should have in a little part, with a little bit of your emulsion that you've taken out of the white emulsion, and then mix it together. And I'm mixing it together like this. And you should have a lovely light blue, okay? You can make it as dark as you like, but do it in slowly, because once you put it in, you can't take it out. However, if you've got a little bit of white left, you can put the white back in, but it's always easier just to, to get the right colour without putting too much in. You get your sponge again, you get the blue on, and then you go back over your white, Okay, so we sponge, and this is called sponging, and it's a really nice technique because you can see some of the white underneath as well. So do it again, nice and slowly. You might have bits on, and then the next time, if you want it a bit, bit more blue, you can go back over. But again, it's all about patience and slowly, slowly. Okay, so when you've got your dapple, it's called a dappled sponged effect. Okay, you let it dry. So you can see here, you know, hopefully you can on here, I've got some bits that are white and blue coming through. And I really love this technique and you can use it on furniture and anything that you want really. Okay, then like I said, I went over the second part of my interior of my box with the blue as well. So I've got a bit of a, a an, you know, a bit of decoration inside. Later you can choose to put your decoupage inside as well okay at this point now we're going to start using the glue so you can't really change your uh, paint techniques at this time so make sure you do all your distressing and you've got your box nicer as you want it and then we can start sticking your decoupage on now you'll have like a, uh, I've shown you earlier bits of decoupage you've got a couple Hopefully you've got a couple, quite a few uh, little butterflies that we've put in and loads of these little um, uh, like rosy kind of uh, flowers. If you've got things that you want, you've seen them in magazines, just cut them out and they will work perfectly the same. Okay. The best way you can see here is to really cut out the background. So you'll need some kind of sharp scissors People suggest in magazines, etc., to use these knives, but I would suggest scissors more. You can keep control of it a little bit more. But the best way to do it, like I've said, is to really keep close to the object that you're cutting out. So all the background is removed. You might want the background, that's fine too. But it be it all it fits better and it merges, it it kind of um, sits nicer on your piece if it's cut out as the object itself, if that makes sense. So when you have got your pieces cut out, um, the best way to um, design your box and make sure that it's all how you want it is to do what we call a dry run without any, any glue at all. So I'm going to put my glue down, I'm being an eager beaver there. The next stage then is to actually um, attach it with the glue. The easiest way for me, I found, is to put the glue actually on the paper, not the object. Okay, some people like to put it on the object, I like to put it on the paper, and then I can still move it round if, it, if I make a mistake. So then when we've attached it, as it dries, it wants to curl away, it's just a, the natural gravity process. So you make sure that all the little bits at the end, like the end of these um, leaves and the smaller um, sections of the flowers are really stuck down and if they curl up later you just get your glue again and put a little dab on there and dab it back down when it's all stuck down leave it for a good like I say to let it's bone dry if you get curly bits and you stick them down again leave it all again make sure it's all kind of stuck down So then you've got your box that's stippled. If you want, there's another technique that um, you can try. Um, it's called uh, distressing, which I mentioned earlier. So you've got now a nice clean 
hopefully you washed your sponge make sure like every, the key here is to dr wash and dry everything in between you've got the scour a bit of your sponge so if you want a little bit of you can run through and that kind of takes the blue off and you can see the white underneath so that, again that's kind of taking it away rather than putting it on and then you've got some quite coarse sandpaper in your um your pack which is a yellow sandpaper and you can really get into your box so you could go right down back to the wooden so you've got a really really lovely way of, of, of trying new new things and again this like i said this is called distressing and you can take this again into any part of your so you can do it on paper you can do it on your if you try this technique on bits of furniture at home okay so that's again that's this stage Then at this stage, you've used some techniques like just rib ribboning it together. You might be really good at calligraphy. So you might want to do some um, actually writing upon it. You might use some techniques from your mandala stone that you had um, in your last pack, I think it was. So you could do lots of dots to so bring those skills in as well. You might have other colours in the house that you can use. So you can use emulsions, you can use acrylics, and you can use poster paints or gouache. Okay. So when you've got to this point, then it's about sealing the box. And I've put three techniques in the, the pack. The first one I've, I've put in is a, it feels a bit scary because it's going all the way over your box with PVA. And what happens is the paper gets wet again. So um, it looks like it's all going wrong, but it's not. It, it will come good in the end. So you can get yourself your PVA. You put it on the end of your sponge. So you have to be very gentle with it. Alternatively, if you've got a nice big brush, maybe an inch brush at home, or you've got a bigger um, painting brush, you can use that as well and it lies flat, okay. Don't do the inside because it goes smelly because we close it and then it can kind of form a, a mold or bacteria in there. So we don't want that. So if you can leave that natural, that's good, okay? But your but the top of your box will be all sealed. And, you know, that might last for 20, 30, possibly 100 years if your box stays together. Um, some of these pieces, I mean, the piece behind me is over 100 years old. And my nan um, did it over again. So it's just been built on. And maybe later on, one of your children might have another layer of your box. So it's something really beautiful to do together. Okay, um, so there is your box. So the first, second technique, you can get some um, just a furniture polish that's wax based. You can spray it over, leave it, make sure you get it off the uh, metal bits because it will erode them, it will eat into them. So maybe if you do that, you might want to cover it with some um, petroleum jelly or you might want to cover it with some um, masking tape. Uh, spray it over leave it let it dry then you can keep spraying it over and this is called building up the patina it's a, a again another technique and it'll just keep building and it will go really lovely and shiny and people get it to a stage where it's kind of almost like glass because they keep building up the wax but that's over many years or if you've got some furniture wax at home you can do that as well and you put it on with the cloth and then you take it off so there's three techniques there. We put one in for you to try, which is the PVA. Alternatively, you can just leave it au naturel because it is actually quite a lovely um, texture already. Um, and again, you, you might knock it out to it, but actually that's natural distressing that I think adds to the box. But what I'd like, I really, really enjoyed myself is as I was doing it, I was kind of folding in some memories of me doing it as well. And thinking about what I was going to use um, and put in so maybe as you're thinking about it it's your time to kind of have your your space really and maybe sort of put a few affirmations in or 
you know, um, I, I realise that doing these things makes me really happy. So I kind of fold that in as I'm painting or pasting away. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. And um, I'm really be interested to see what techniques and, and things you decide to put on your box, what different papers you might have, and um, what you're going to use it for. I'm really excited to see what you do with them. Okay, enjoy it because I did. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see all your, your uh, variations. That's fantastic, Simone. Thank you so much for sharing the, your process with us. Really enjoyed watching and learning from you. Um, the box looks amazing. So I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody's designs. Um, so thank you very much, Simone. No, it's been a pleasure. I look really excited to see what, what you're doing, ladies. And one of the things that I really like about this project is that it takes time and that you can do a little bit, let it dry, carry on with whatever else you've got going on and then go back to it. When the pack comes out, we're going to guest, bring Simone in as a guest onto our social media. So she'll be on the Facebook and the WhatsApp chat. So if you do have any questions, it's a really good opportunity so you can speak to Simone directly and she'll be able to answer any queries that you have. Um, and I'm sure she'll give you some encouragement as well. So she'll be our guest on the chats when the pack is out. I'm really looking forward to seeing your designs. So take care, everybody. And I really do hope to see you soon. Bye.